Okay, let's talk briefly about the production function. You're going to see that a lot of these concepts look really similar to what we talked about for the utility maximization problem. So a production function is just a mathematical way to represent a firm's technology, how they produce the good. And it's going to give us the maximum output that can be generated for a given level of input. So here I have the quantity that the firm produces is a function of L. L is going to be labor or the number of workers and it could also be a function of labor and capital. Capital is going to be machinery. So it could be anything from say an oven in a cookie shop all the way up to a production plant. So the production function is analogous to our utility function. Utility, uh, the utility function gave us the highest satisfaction when we consume two goods. The production function is the highest output when the firm uses different levels of input, like labor and capital. So here is a picture of a production function where I have output level or quantity on the y-axis and we have labor or number of workers on the x-axis. So I have, I'm ignoring capital for the moment. Basically we can assume that capital is being held fixed. So um, if you think about a cookie shop, we're holding the number of ovens fixed and we're seeing how does the output or the number of cookies produced vary when I change the number of workers. And here what we are seeing is that when we have six workers, then the cookie shop can produce nine cookies. And this might be in thousands, so it could be 9,000 cookies, or it could be in hundreds. So it could be 900 cookies. It depends on how we're measuring that output. So one thing to take note of is the shape of this production function. It goes up more steeply and then it levels off a bit. So in other words, the slope is steeper and then it flattens out as the number of workers goes up. And this characteristic is pretty common and we typically refer to it as diminishing marginal product. In this case, diminishing marginal product of labor. So basically it just says that when you hire an additional worker, they might produce more. They might produce a positive amount, but they produce less than the previous worker did. So the way I think about it is cooks in the kitchen. So when you keep adding cooks in the kitchen and you don't change the number of ovens, then things are going to get a little hectic. And those additional workers are not going to be as productive. And eventually it could be that you add so many new, new cooks in the kitchen without adding ovens that number of cookies actually goes down. Now that's not what we saw in the previous slide, but it's possible. So here's an example of a production function. I have quantity as a function of labor and capital. And I just wanted to show you that we can take this expression, which is 2 times the number of workers raised to the one-third power times the amount of capital raised to the one-third power and we can plug in the number of workers and the amount of capital and find the quantity. So here the quantity, the maximum quantity that can be produced with one worker 
and eight ovens or pieces of capital is two times one to the one third times eight to the one third. So that is two times one and eight to the one third is two. So we have a quantity of four.